What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another twin motion tutorial for you. So in today's video I wanted to talk about how we can use the particle effects systems to add different effects to our renderings. So things like fire or smoke or dripping water or other things like that. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so one of the ways that we can add some life to our renderings and also some effects that make things look a little bit more realistic is we can add a particle effect system in order to create different effects. So there's a number of different effects contained within twin motion, including options for doing things like simulating smoke or fire or running water and some other things as well. And so I wanted to kind of walk you through what's available, how to work with them, other things like that. So to start off, you can find the particle systems inside of Twin Motion by going over into your library, and it's kind of hidden. Um, you have to go under the Furnitures section, and then you can find these under Particles. So inside of Furnitures, Particles, you've got options for all of these different particle systems. And so the cool thing about these is these have already been built and uh, they're ready for you to bring in. You don't have to change or adjust any settings. Now the downside to that is they're a little less customizable than if you'd built them yourself, but they're very useful for creating these different effects. So to start off, for example, let's say that we've got our pile of sticks here and we wanna create a campfire. Well, in order to create a campfire, we would look through our particles and we would see that probably the two best bets are going to be the small fire or the fire with smoke. So let's start by dragging the small fire on top of our campfire. So you'll notice that as soon as we do this, this starts simulating a fire effect on top of our campfire. So we don't have to make any changes or anything like that. It literally just kind of sits there in space and simulates a fire. So, and if we were to turn our daytime down, you can see how you can see this fire a little bit more. So it's more pronounced. You can see the little effects coming off of it. It's actually a pretty cool effect. And so you can use this to simulate things like this. And one cool thing about this is these are editable in the sense that you can move them around. And then you can also use like the scale tool to make them bigger or smaller. So if you want to make your fire bigger, you can click and drag this up. If you want to make it smaller, you can use the scale tool to scale it down. Now that is about the limit of how much you can actually adjust these effect systems. So like for example, let's say we wanted this to just get bigger and have smoke. We can't really adjust anything about this fire. What we would do instead is we would just pick the fire with smoke option instead. So you can see how the fire with smoke option is gonna create a much bigger fire. And it's also gonna have smoke that kind of trails off in the distance. So depending on what you're trying to do and what you're trying to create, you can pick different effects in here, but you can't necessarily do anything else with them other than just having them as they are built sitting in your scene. And so one thing I do wanna point out about these, and I'm probably gonna take that and go back to the original fire instead of the big fire with smoke. But one thing I wanna point out about these is they don't necessarily cast light. So this isn't really a light source. So for example, if I was to zoom in here and look at this, and I'm gonna recenter it real quick. If I was to look at this with my lights completely off, so if I was to click on the eye and turn it to dark, you can see how you're not really getting a whole lot of light being cast off of this. You are getting a little bit right around where the fire is, but overall, this isn't really casting a whole lot of light. If you wanted more light associated with this, you would probably wanna tie this to something like an omnidirectional light. So you would place that where your fire is, and maybe you wouldn't want it to be quite this bright, but you could use that omnidirectional light to cast a little bit of light around your fire. And then you could use the color temperature to adjust the color of the light that's being created. So if you were to export an animation, you can see how this fire is not currently driving like actual shadows as if it was a fire, but it does allow you to simulate this effect fairly easily. And so there are other effects built in as well. So for example, another good one for an outdoor situation would be the fog. So if we go into our particle system, there's a fog bank and also a ground fog option. So if I click and drag, and let's go ahead and change this so that it's not snowy so that you can see it a little bit better. Maybe we'll make it rainy for right now. Yeah, I think the rainy works well. And I'll delete this out and drag it back in so you can see it a little bit better. But if we were to delete out our ground fog, Thank you. 
and then drag a new one in. You can see how what this does is this, uh, this basically includes a fog effect, and it's kind of faint, but it includes a fog effect around our cursor. So the fog bank is a little bit more pronounced, but you can see how that actually simulates an area of fog around that cursor. So you could bring in a couple of these if you wanted to, to make this area look kind of foggy and rainy. So you can see how you can kind of stack those on top of each other to get a stronger effect if that's what you want. So if you were going for more of a foggy effect, like in a bog or something like that, you can do that really easily using these different effects. So you can couple the fog with like the rainy effect or the cloudy effect in order to make this look a certain way. But those are definitely in here for your outdoor scenes. So in addition, there are also some other particle systems that a lot of the time work a little bit better inside of like a cityscape so for example in addition to having fire and smoke or, or fires with smoke or fog you also have the options to simulate smoke or water so for example there's an option in here for dripping water and I really like this one because it creates kind of a cool effect if you zoom in and look at it um, you can see how it simulates dripping water water dripping out of the sky and you can't see it super well with just the blue sky right there you can see how what this does is this actually simulates a water puddle at the base and what i like is it actually affects the material down below it so it looks like there's actually water on the ground right here so and you can see how this gets even more pronounced if it's up against the wall so if you have a scene where you want water to be running or dripping um, i really like this effect so some of the other effects that you have in here is, let's say you had like a fountain. So there's a water jet effect that'll actually like water jet up. So if you had a fountain or something like that that was supposed to uh, spray water up, you've got this option built in as well. So you've got also got options for multiple different colors of smoke. So those are really going to be situation dependent. I mean, if you're doing architectural visualization, you're probably not gonna do a lot with blue smoke, but there are a lot of other applications where having different colors of smoke would be really helpful. Um, I personally find the actual smoke function a little more helpful. So what that one does is that actually generates smoke inside of your rendering. And the cool thing about that is let's say that you had like a, uh, a vehicle. So let's say we had like a truck or something. And we were to drag that into our scene and let's say you wanted this to have like exhaust coming out of it. So for it to look like it's idling or something like that, we'll go ahead and call this the exhaust pipe for what we're trying to do right now. Well, you could actually take that smoke particle system and add this in here as part of an animation. And so then in your animation, you could actually have a truck idling here and this would look like it has actual exhaust coming out of it. So you can kind of couple this with the models in order to simulate other looks as well. So these particle systems can add a lot to your scenes and they're really easy to manage. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Are you using the particle systems? Did you even know they were in there? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.